was going to say. I was just going to say what, what's an interesting practice uh, here in Israel and in, in Orthodox homes. They'll have the, the hamets and they'll gather it up and they'll uh, put it in, in one place and then they'll actually do a transaction with a friend or someone mm -hmm. that is uh, not Jewish and they'll actually s uh, sell it mm -hmm. in a sense. Um, like for 10 cents, I mean, yeah. nothing. So, so it's still in their house in some place, but because it's, it's not, it doesn't belong to them anymore, then it's not a problem. Then after Passover, then they buy it back. <laughs> It's Jesus. very, okay. very Jewish thinking. That's, uh, that's how we get around things. <laughs> but you know, the country do it, the rabbis do it as a whole for all the country as well. So yeah. It's all yeah, they do it for the whole, to redeem the whole country. Yeah. But no, there, I respect the rabbis, but there are a lot of things that they do that are not scriptural and that you don't have to follow. They're, we follow the scripture. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. Amen. But we respect them. You know, they're trying. So do you want to start, Carolyn, with uh, some a story of some Passover Passovers that we've experienced, or would you like to light the candles? Let's just um, let me just introduce everybody and then uh, we'll turn it over to you. Okay. So <clears throat> everybody is looking great today. You're ready for this great hour. Well, well, we want to say welcome to the Global Watch International Call. It's Friday, March 26th, 5 p.m. Jerusalem time. It's the beginning of Shabbat. And Carolyn and Richard Hyde are leading, and we are excited. Thank you all for coming on and being willing to lead for this group. And uh, we are looking forward to the next hour. So go ahead, Richard and Carolyn, take over. Yeah. Well, um, we actually lived in Israel, uh, excuse me, in, in Germany for two and a half years. It's quite a story of how we ended up uh, in, in the, that location, uh, quite miraculous, actually. But um, did you want to share? share yeah. yeah, I maybe, thought it'd be good to start of off with sharing it because it's kind of Pesach um, going into Shabbat or Shabbat going into Pesach. So it's. Yeah, it's we're going to do it's the a same together. Um, so, and by the way, as far as the worship goes, well, I'll explain that in a bit. Um, but when we lived in Germany, um, the Lord, it's, I'm making a very long story short, the Lord called us to live there, even though I grew up with a real strong hatred of Germany, uh, which he healed me of that during our time living there. Um, that, um, we actually lived in a little town called Pfaffenhofen an der Inn. Uh, but, but maybe before, north of we, Munich. before we get into the actual Passover story, why don't you yeah. talk about how we ended up in Germany in the first place? Just a little bit. I think a little background would be good. Uh huh. Okay. Well, it was a calling from the Lord, and we didn't want to go. We fought him for two years. Never good to fight the Lord, he always wins. Uh, <laughs> But we tried to get out of that calling and because, you know, Richard had a business, we had planted a congregation, it was over 300 people, um, and we were homeschooling. Yeah, so, but the Lord made it very clear to give up everything and move to Germany. Well, I, Kira, I know she's going to make it really short, but I got to give you a little more detail. Uh, so what would happen in this situation, we'd, we had actually gone to uh, Germany uh, and, and to Europe. Uh, the Lord had called us, uh, Carolyn actually had a dream of, about coming. And so, uh, so anyway, when we'd come back home, it was just, we were just visiting and we had come back home. Then Carolyn would wake me up in the middle of the night uh, and, and say, I think we should move to Munich. And this happened over and over and, and over. And that, then I would say, well, I think you should go back to sleep. <laughs> so we, you know, we, we didn't, it, just over a period of time, this just kept happening. So I said, well, let's pray about it. And so we did. And uh, so at the day after we prayed, Carolyn goes to a secondhand store and she walks in the store and she sees seven uh, posters in a row and every one of them was about Munich. 
which I thought that was interesting. But of course, that was not enough for us. So then we'd gone on a vacation out west and we went the opposite way. We went just like Jonah. Way. Yeah, just we didn't like go Jonah. to Nineveh. We went to Tarshish. <laughs> <laughs> and as we were on our, our, our journey, we met uh, uh, foreigners, but not just anybody, only people from Germany and not just any place in Germany, but only from Munich. Seven times. <laughs> Seven times. And there, there are a lot of I'm embarrassed to say how many times we turned the fleece over. Like Gidon just did it twice. We did it at least a hundred times. Yeah, what and every time it was clear, Munich, move to Munich. Yeah. So So we ended up yeah. doing it. it. There's more to that story. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very interesting. But uh, but when we finally got there uh, after two years, and then um we ended up living in a small town, Pfaffenhofen under Ilm, north of Munich. Um, and our next door neighbor was a historian. Mm -hmm. And he gave us a tour of the town. And so we, we went to a uh, hotel that was owned by the uh, mayor um, mm -hmm. of the city. And so when we walked in, I just- he, he told us that this hotel was where Hitler used to come. He was friends with the mayor of that town. And he personally sat with him in that hotel and made plans for the final solution. Yeah, and so of course, when we were standing in the, the lobby of that hotel and we heard that story, just the spirit of the Lord came over me and I said, we, we are going to redeem this place. We're gonna have a Passover Seder here. <laughs> so we're telling you this story because Passover is, obviously it's one of the Shlosha Regalim, one of the three feasts where we're required to go up to Jerusalem, which we'll finally get to do because we don't have lockdowns uh, anymore. Um, and it's also a feast of the Lord in Leviticus 23, but it's also a beautiful way. Uh, it's a beautiful picture of redemption. Yeah, deliverance and, and, and deliverance. Mm -hmm. And so we did a Passover seder well, let's in talk that a, place. Let's talk about how that how that happened. Yeah, it was cr crazy because <laughs> uh, Munich is a, a place where it's a, a very Catholic, and so we would go in Bavaria. And so, so, so the way that you actually uh, have events there is that you sell tickets and you do that at, at the bookstore. To the Buchhandlung, yeah. And so when we go in, went to the bookstore and explained to them, you know, what we were wanting to do, you know, he looked at the, the, the card and he said, was is das, you know? And, uh, and you know, he, he said, you guys aren't gonna sell anything. Nobody knows anything All about the this. Catholic priests we talked to didn't, uh, didn't have any hope that anyone would come to the They Seder. didn't often know what we were talking yeah, about, actually. Yeah, that's true, that's true. And, and so, uh, so we had, it came to a point about a week before we had to tell them how many people we were going to have at the Passover Seder. And the room held 200 and we had only sold 50 tickets. Yeah. And so we prayed about it and the Lord tell, told us to tell them that we're going to sell this out. Every 200. One, 200 of them. Of course, that was coming out of our pocket, of, you know, if we didn't <laughs> get the numbers. Uh, and so what happened was the Lord sent along a journalist from the, the newspaper, and he, uh, she did a article about our family. Mm -hmm. Because um, it was very unusual. All the, all the Jewish families in that town were taken away in the Holocaust and no Jews had ever settled since then. Yeah, they so had we a, were the first Jewish they family. They had a, a Jewish neighborhood, uh, but no one lived there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was totally empty. So it was, they thought it was really fascinating that a Jewish family would come back again and to live in this. So they did an village. article on our family and they had such a good response. Two days later, they did an article on the Passover, the Passafest, the Pesach. And um, we sold out. Yeah. Uh, we, in fact, we had 220. We had to bring in extra tables because that's one thing in, in the Jewish mindset, you never turn away anyone from a Seder. You get out more tape, right? Roberta, Roberta and Esther are saying yes. Yeah. It's just tradition. You make room, you, you do whatever you have to do, but you and never turn away In fact, our focus anyone. wasn't towards uh, the church or, or Christians. It was uh, towards the people in Pfaffenhofen. And uh, so we, uh, you know, we ended up having uh, the vice mayor and many mm -hmm. people, many and officials, and all these officials, most of them, you know, not believers. And of course, this being a Passover, I wanted to be very careful that we didn't have any chametz, any yeast. And so I was going almost every day to talk with the, the, the chef. chef and the 
make sure that we had everything in place. And, and then we, we had, uh, we did some Israeli dancing. So there was- Our daughter was in a rock band with a bunch of young Germans. And she, uh, we raised them up to be our uh, worship dance team. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we had funny. to do with what we had, so. And yeah. so, you know, dear, uh, so during the, the Passover, we actually ended up doing some Israeli dancing. So, you know, you can imagine these Germans being pretty stiff and and and, and the idea that we could get all of them up and involved in it was Well, really... usually when we're in a congregation and we call for people to come and dance, uh, maybe 10% of the people get up, but all of the Germans got up to dance, all 220. And so we had to push, it was amazing. Yeah. It, and that night, the intercessors who were there said something broke in the heavenlies, that, that, that there would be a Passover Seder in that place. Um, so our prayer tonight would is you that, that you get a little taste of this um, as we're speaking. You know, it's a good thing you're recording this. I'll, I'll, tell you why in just a minute. Well, just you know, as you know, the Passover is is a very evangelistic and, mm -hmm. and salvation is, yeah. is such a picture of it there. And and so that's what we were able to present, you know, the to these, these leaders here in, in the city uh, is, is the gospel. Yeah. Uh, and so what was really funny, it was afterwards, uh, you know, we're sitting there, we're looking at the tables and that most people had left. And I'm, I'm seeing all these beer signs, one after another, just on, on the table. <laughs> and then it hits me. What is beer made out of? Yeast. <laughs> Yeast. <laughs> <laughs> so we had our Passover Seder in Germany with beer. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but we knew the Lord understood. He <laughs> understands completely. It, so, it was an amazing time. Like I said, the intercessor said, something in the heavenlies broke and it, it really did it 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 began a ministry for us in, in fact in well, i think we should segue into that and tell a little bit about the ministry how that started because the essence of the ministry uh in germany was based upon the passover mm -hmm. and the message of salvation that's found yeah. in it yeah passover if you're ever sharing the gospel with a jewish person or it's an incredible way to share Messiah through the Passover. It's the most beautiful picture. And um, yeah, so we, we, the Lord opened a door to the public schools to share Messiah there, but through a Jewish perspective. And, and the kids caught it. They really caught it. And, and it made a, a big difference for them. Just talk um, about it a little bit. I think it's good to okay. see, yeah. Yeah, the, just maybe give an example or what you say or just something of what we present to the kids when we go in. We actually still do it today. Well, uh, pre-COVID. Well, pre-COVID, uh, yeah. We haven't done it since we've been stuck here, but uh, is, is we're actually invited to go into the public schools. Usually we speak to, to uh, ages uh, above 15 years old, 14, 15 years old, and we're able to go into the public schools and talk to them about Jewish life and culture but we do that through the greatest Jew that ever lived, Yeshua, mm -hmm. uh, you know? And so, so that's what we're doing. We're, we're talking about Jewish life and culture. And one of the, the best ways that we can do that is through the Passover. Uh, through the greatest through the, Jew who ever lived and, and that, he kept the feasts. Yeah, and that he was the, the lamb and, and mm -hmm. just the, the blood over the, the door and being mm -hmm. over the blood over the door post of our hearts. So actually what we're doing is we're presenting the gospel uh, you know, right here in, in German schools. And we give the we, the, did that. we give the, the young men and women an opportunity to to come to accept the Lord, to repent of their sins mm -hmm. and, and, to, uh, mm -hmm. and, to, and to receive salvation. Uh, and it's amazing. We often see on the average, probably 70% of them coming to the Lord. We've seen hundreds, mm -hmm. even thousands over the years of kids and uh, yeah. German school kids coming to the Lord. So we're very grateful for that. Yeah. Very, very grateful. Um, and so with that, we want to uh, start the Shabbat and light the candles. Um, and I've already cleaned. Uh, uh, oh, you can't see anything because of the. Uh, oh, we got such a nice view. Yeah, here. look at the. I mean, you can see it real quick. Here's the view of the uh, Jordan Valley. And the Sea of Galilee. Sea of Galilee, where we live. I don't know. Can you see it? Okay. Can you see it? 
Yes, know. we want we want an invitation, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're you're all invited, okay? And maybe I'll. Maybe. And you can't turn us away either. We you just told us, so it's all good. Yes, we would love to, absolutely love to have a, a another Shabbat in our home with you all. We miss you. Yeah. So. Let's hold a prayer. Here we go. Okay. Maybe that's better. See, yeah, we can not see. so well. No, uh -uh. it has to be from that side. Yeah. Okay, so we'll light the candles. And uh, as you can see, we don't have halot because I've already uh, cleaned the house, all the cupboards, everything is totally clean of chametz. So even though we don't officially start Passover till tomorrow, we'll use matzah. Uh, La 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 Sivanu vitsivanu lishmorata shabbat. Sivanu Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat 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 shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to everyone. We're going to. Uh, Now, because we actually have um, matzah, we could actually do communion. Uh, generally on Shabbat, we, we don't do that with uh, the bread because it's fluffy bread. It has uh, leaven in it. But uh, maybe we'll give you a little bit of time to go if you would like to celebrate communion with us. Um, to get a little bit of wine and bread, and then we can do that together. So, so we'll give you a little bit of time. And, and also, um, we were going to do a time of worship together. Uh, I don't know if, if you noticed, but I have uh, wounded my hand, and so I can't play the piano or guitar. I was in Sfat uh, this last week where um, I'm working in a soup kitchen where we feed the poor. And I was lifting heavy boxes, um, thinking I'm only 25 years old, but I'm not anymore. And um, so I- You just got prettier over the years. Ah, brownie <laughs> points. Uh, but <laughs> but I, I did something and I don't know what. So I can't play the piano now. Um, I, and I hope I can play tomorrow for our sa family Seder. But, but what I wanted to do instead of a time of worship, since many, how many of you will probably do a Passover? Um, yeah, a lot of hands going up. Okay. So I wanted to, in, for the worship time, sing uh, a few of the traditional songs for you, just so you can hear the melodies. And if you'd like, you can feel welcome to use this recording at your own Passover Seder and um, use some of the songs. So the first one, we always do this one, Bechol Dor Vador. What it basically says is when you celebrate the Passover, it's not just a demonstration. It's like you yourself are coming out of Egypt all over again. And you live this, it, it's, it's a reality. Um, and so the words are in every generation, a man must think of himself as having gone forth out of Egypt. So it goes like this. 
בכל דור ודור חייב אדם לראות, לראות את עצמו כאילו הוא, כאילו הוא יצא ממצרים. בכל דור ודור חייב, חייב אדם. לראות את עצמו כאילו הוא, כאילו הוא, כאילו הוא יצא ממצרים. So we come out of Egypt together. We come out of slavery, out of bondage. Now, as you're looking at the next song, I think what would be a nice thing to do since on Shabbat, we love to uh, bless our family, and to be appreciative of what the Lord has done for us. Mm -hmm. So I, I know some of you guys are there with couples, which is wonderful. Uh, maybe you can turn to the one that you're with there and just tell uh, each one of you, have, take turns just saying what you appreciate. Just one, maybe just one thing that you appreciate with your, your loved one there. And ones that are alone, maybe there's something you could, can you do something in the chat? Uh, no, it, it's a big thing to break out. Okay, break so out we rooms. won't do the breakouts. No. Uh -uh. But um, just tell the Lord what you're thankful for. Yeah. <laughs> and have, have a little, so let's just take a, about a minute or so. Uh, and, and just what you can do is, you know what? Once that we are can... alone, you can say, tell the Lord what you're thankful, what you appreciate in him, something specific, and allow the Lord to tell you what he appreciates in you. Yeah. And then we'll do it personally, and you guys can that have two of you, you can do it personally. So let's just take a minute to do that, and then we'll go okay. back into the, the songs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let's put that. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, bless you all. Bless you all. It's a good thing to express gratitude, huh? It, it totally changes the atmosphere. Yeah. So as, as we're finishing up that, I will move back towards next time when I'm with you, God willing, this will be healed and um, we'll have a real time of worship. Um, but actually, this is good. I, I hope you can use these songs. A very integral part of the Passover is the Manishtana. It's, um, it's a time where uh, the youngest child who is able uh, to ask the four questions, um, it's, a, it's a very special time. And I know those of you who are going to celebrate uh, this time, you, you know what the questions are and you know what they, uh, but I'll just read it for those who don't know. Um, so why is this night different from all other nights? That's what you're asking. Why do we eat unleavened bread, matzah, instead of leavened bread? Why do we eat different types of vegetables on other nights, but only bitter herbs on this night? Um, and of course, you know the answers. The first one, the matzah, we ate that because we were coming out of Egypt and we didn't have time for the bread to rise. Um, and we eat bitter herbs on this night to remember that we were in bitter slavery and it was, it was a terrible time in our history. Number three, why do we dip our food uh, twice on that night? And, and by the way, just a little side note, you know, in the scripture, when Yeshua told the disciples, one of you is going to betray me tonight. Remember that? And all the disciples said, who, who is it? You know, they, they couldn't believe it. And Yeshua said, it's the one who dips with me. Well, they weren't eating nachos and dips, okay? This was, this was a Passover Seder. So they were dipping the parsley in the salt water or they, you know, to, to remember that, that parsley in the spring and the salt water represents the tears. 
um, or they were dipping the, the matzah in the um, chorotzah, in the moror, the, the chorotzah. It's like this apple mix that we make. That's really the highlight of a seder for me. Um, and and uh, But it's to remember, the, it looks like mortar. It's what we built the bricks with. And so, you know, why do we dip twice on that night? And then the fourth question is, why do we eat reclining uh, instead of sitting up straight? So I'll just sing that for you. And you can, like I said, feel free to use it at your Seder. Hallelujah, <laughs> Halaila haza, halaila haza, halaila haza, halaila haza. Shtei pe'amim, halaila haza, halaila haza. Shtei pe'amim, shabachol halaylot. Anu ochlim, ben yoshvim v'mesubim, ben yoshvim v'mesubim. Halaila haza, halaila haza, halaila haza, halaila haza. Kulanu mesubim. Another one. Of course, you've got to have dayenu. It means it would have been enough if he had given us the Torah, it, it, it would have been enough if he had done all these things, if he had led us out of slavery, if he had brought us to the promised land, gave us the Torah. And then of course we add as, Annie, I love Dayenu too. It, it would have been, and he, at the end in the Messianic Seders, we say uh, it would have been enough. Um, and he even gave us our salvation, our Yeshua. And so just, I'll only sing three verses of it. Ilu hotzi hotzi anu, hotzi anu mi mitzrayim, hotzi anu mi mitzrayim, dai enu. Dai, dai enu, dai, dai enu, dai, dai enu, dai enu, dai enu, dai enu, dai, dai enu, dai, dai enu, dai, dai enu, dai enu, dai enu. Ilu natan natan lanu natan lanu et a tora natan lanu et a tora dai enu dai dai enu dai dai enu dai dai enu dai enu dai enu dai enu dai dai enu dai dai enu dai dai enu dai enu dai enu Ilu shalach shalach lanu shalach lanu et Yeshua shalach lanu et Yeshua dai enu dai dai enu ken dai dai enu dai dai enu dai enu dai enu dai enu dai dai enu dai dai enu dai dai enu dai enu dai enu hey yeha praise the Lord to get my Texas heritage in there a little bit he's from Texas um. Okay, two more to end. Uh, there are so many other ones that we do, but I just wanted to give you some of the highlights. Um, Eliyahu Hanavi. Um, near the end of the Seder, after we look for and find the Afakoman, we send all our kids out to, to find it. And used to be 20, it used to be 10 cents when I was a kid, when uh, we would redeem the Afakoman. Uh, but now it's like, you know, 20 shekels or something. Um, but anyway, the youngest child goes to the door to see if Eliyahu is here. And one of these days he's going to show up, but he obviously hasn't come. Uh, we don't know about this year. But we sing this song, uh, remembering, and it's really a prophetic song, because who comes after Eliyahu, after Elijah the prophet? Yeshua. So it's it's a very prophetic song. It's it's, be it's a beautiful tradition. Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Hatishbi, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Agiladi, 
במהרה בימינו יבוא אלינו עם משיח בן דוד, עם משיח בן דוד, come the promised ישוע, born to set thy people free from our sin and fear release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Hatishbi, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Hagilati. And of course, when the Seder is finished, there's one final song that we have to sing. You do the Seder in whatever town you're in, but the prayer and the longing of every Jew and of everyone who's connected to us, all of you, is that we will celebrate next year in Jerusalem. Lashana haba'a beYerushalayim. Lashana haba'a, lashana haba'a, lashana haba'a beYerushalayim. Lashana haba'a, lashana haba'a, lashana haba'a beYerushalayim. Lashana haba'a, lashana beYerushalayim. Lashana haba'a, lashana haba'a, lashana haba'a beYerushalayim. Lashana haba'a. Lashana haba'a, lashana haba'a beYerushalayim. Lashana haba'a, lashana beYerushalayim. So next year in Jerusalem. Amen. Man, we did a whole seder in seven minutes. Or wow, there. that's the fastest <laughs> seder ever. <laughs> Do you have the elements for communion? If you'd like to celebrate that with us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood of Yeshua. Thank you for the four cups that we'll be drinking tomorrow at the Seder to remind us of the cup of salvation, the cup of praise, the cup of redemption. The cup of freedom. The cup of sanctification. Sanctification, yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. We just do thank you, Lord, that you fulfill all these cups. Yes. You are our sanctifier. You make us holy, even though we're not. But but we are because you do forgive us of our sins. Yes. Not because of what we've done, but because of what you do for us. And Lord, we just receive that. We receive that sanctification. Yes and and deliverance lord and you deliver us from our from our sin yes. from our situation and you bring salvation hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord. you and, are salvation yes and through that we praise you yes. and we celebrate the cup of praise hallelujah Baruch atarunai eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagafen Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. Amen. So, to life. To life. L'chaim. L'chaim. Hallelujah. Eternal life. Chaim l'netzach. Thank you, Lord. Well, we, we have two uh, matzot here. Mm -hmm. If we were in the Seder, we would have the third one. We would take that, the middle one, which represents Yeshua, yeah. and uh, break that one. But we can, we'll do this one here. Hallelujah. And of course, you notice that the matzah um, is, has got tiny holes in it. it. It's so that the bread doesn't rise um, and it also has stripes because it's on like the way they bake it, it comes out. But the prophetic significance of this comes from Isaiah 53. By his stripes, 
we are healed and he was pierced for our transgressions. And so it's a beautiful picture of Yeshua, our Messiah. And of course, Yeshua said that he is the bread of life. Mm -hmm. And of course, he was born in Bethlehem. The house of bread. The house of bread. Yeah. So, hallelujah. He fulfills it all. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, you're going to pass some salt here, Carolyn? The covenant that he's, he's made with us. Yes. This covenant that the Lord kept. We have life in Yeshua. So, Lord, we just thank you for your body that was broken for us. Yes. That you laid down your life for we us. We remember. You didn't remember. hold back. You you gave all that, that, was, that you were able to give for us because of yes. your love for us. And we so much appreciate that, Father. Yes. Hallelujah. And, Father, in this season, we pray that you would help us get rid of all the chametz from our hearts, from our thoughts, from our attitudes. We have cleaned our house and made it all clean for Pesach. But the thing that you desire most is that we would have a lev tahor, a clean heart before you. So Father, help us to get rid of the chametz, the yeast, the leaven from our hearts, our minds. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Messiah. Release us from bad attitudes and help us, Father, to be grateful for all that you have done for us in this season. B'Shem Yeshua. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Amen. Amen. His body broken for us. We do this in remembrance of you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Could you hand me that my phone prescription? Underneath that, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wanted just to take a, a just a little bit of time and share a scripture from a Passover scripture, something that's really uh, come alive to me. Um, I remember uh, it was about a year ago, I guess. Uh, I was at a, uh, a meeting in, out in the forest up here in the northern part of Israel. It's where uh, the congregations um, gather together, uh, all the different congregations, and, and we have a service in, in the forest. And one of the leaders was uh, sitting at a, a table and his uh, young uh, daughter, maybe seven, eight years old, comes up uh, and she was crying and just, you could tell that emotionally she was not in, in a good place, some type of rejection or something. I, I wasn't close enough to actually hear, but I could see the interaction between the father and the daughter. And um, the, 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 uh, pastor is really well known for his uh, uh, teaching ability. Um, and so I could see that was just kind of kicked in. He wanted to get to what was the source of, of the problem, uh, you know, and just, you know, asking her, what, what, tell me what happened, what's, what, you know, what's, what, because he knew that if he can, if he knew what would, could have, what happened, then he could come up with a solution. But, you know, that's really not very satisfying to a person if you if you think about it. You know, I, I know mm -hmm. often women will want to share with their husband, and the husband is in the uh, solution mode. You tell me, I'll fix it. You know, <laughs> or I'll tell you how you can fix it. <laughs> but it, as you know, that that that's not very satisfying. It doesn't really um, doesn't really meet them at at the point so of their need. And so it's very interesting that in scripture during the Passover, God actually shows us how to, to really enter uh, to how to in a, in a situation like this, how to approach it. And it's found in Exodus 3, 7. Let's see if we can find that here. And this relates to the Passover because this is when Moses was in front of the burning bush. 
Right, yeah. And he, he tells Moses this is uh, his holy uh, land. And, um, and then he, starting in verse seven, it says, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people. I have heard them crying out. So we see right here from the very be beginning, God is validating what's going on. What, what, what's the situation? The Jewish people have been um, uh, just crying out to the Lord because of the enslavement that they've been enduring and all the pain and the stuff. And the Lord's, first of all, the first thing that he says is that I see your misery. Mm -hmm. And I heard you crying out. And so what he's doing is, is he's validating what's going on with, with the Jewish people at this time. He says, I, I, I understand. I can, I can see uh, your misery. I can see how deep this has is, is gone into you. And, and, and I, I can hear and can hear what you have, have to say. And then, and then what he says, I've heard you crying because of the slave drivers. And I am concerned about your suffering. So he's saying, I see you mm -hmm. and I hear you mm -hmm. and I'm concerned. It's a big deal. I, I mm -hmm. see that this suffering that 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 you're that you're going through. And it is it, it is a big deal and it, it has concerned me. So we see that that God is validating it. And then he, he's 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 saying that, listen, he, he's coming in in, in in the same similar type of emotion that you know i'm concerned this is something that is that's important to me and then he says look at this first phrase in eight he says so i have come down so he sees us he hears us he's concerned about what's going on with it he says i have come down he's come and, and he's with us mm -hmm. he he wants to just be with us you know and and, and a lot of the times if you notice that when when people are telling us uh, what's going on with them. Well, first of all, you know, we've talked about, you know, trying to fix the situation or, you know, we're, we're, we're not really hearing or we're not really seeing or we're not really, you know, concerned. We want to get, get to the end, but God is, is working through this whole process because he wants us to, to know that we, that he, he cares about us. He hears us. He hears what we're saying. Um, and then what does it say after, that uh, so, I, so I have come down and then the Lord, this is what he's, he can do. He's, so he sees us, he hears us, he's concerned about it. He's with us, he comes down and he's with us. And then finally, it's to rescue, to rescue the Jewish people from the hand of the So Egyptians. he's gonna do something about it. Yeah, so then the mm -hmm. final thing is actually do something about it. That's the fifth thing that he, he's going to do, not initially, not that, okay, mm -hmm. tell me what it is and let's fix it and I'll do it. We're going to get to that solution, but first of all, let's bring healing. Let's mm -hmm. deal with what's going on with you emotionally and and, and let's, let's heal that. Uh, and then the, the solution is just kind of secondary in a sense. Yeah. So that's, you know, that, that is a, a perfect uh, picture of how we can deal with with people that we love. Say, you know, like with our grandkids or something, you know, when, when uh, say just something simple and the, our, our little three-year-old grandson hits his foot on, on the, the uh, table or something, he doesn't, you know, in the way that I was raised, what happened in our family is my my mom was very good at taking care of my physical needs, but she wasn't really very good at taking care of my emotional needs. She wasn't often there for me. Um, and so when, when I was hurting and crying out emotionally, often my mom wouldn't be there. And so my response was to just say, well, you know what? It's not really that big of a deal. I, I, you know, I, cause, cause if it was a really big deal, I guess she would be here, you know? Uh, but 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 she's not. So I guess it's not a really big deal. So my response with my kids when they were growing up, one of my main responses was something that was emotional, that was painful. I would just go, well, it's not a big deal. It's, you know, just get, get over it. Mm -hmm. Just suck it up. And, you know, my dad was a Marine. So I would think that, well, you know, we're just making the kids tough. It's a tough world out there. You know, we we need to just, you know, just, just toughen them up. But that's actually the very worst thing that you can do. What really makes uh, people strong is when they're uh, emo emotionally 
uh, strong and, and, mm -hmm. and that we can, they, as when they're little like that, we can come and show them and, and to be with them, we can validate it. Like when they, when he does hit his foot against the, the table, we can say, oh, wow, I, I, I can see that that really hurts you. I can, I can hear you, you know, you're, you're crying and, um, you know, it's a big deal. It's not a small thing. I, mm -hmm. I know that, I know that really hurts and, and you can just get in there and hold them and, and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm right here with you. And, and, um, you know, we can do something about that. We can, you know, get that table out of the way. So when you're playing, you won't hit your foot. Is, is how's that? Does that sound good? And so when you've really connected with them along that way, it brings, you know, healing and, and life and, re, and, and the, you know, relationship. It's not like, oh, he's just trying to blow me off and telling me it's not, you know, it's no big deal. So by the way, these things that Richard is talking about, we have learned from a ministry called Thrive Today. Um, you can look it up online and it's about raising up emotionally mature people. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful ministry. And I, I, I only wish we had known about this earlier yeah, so that we could kids. raise our kids with uh, more healthy attachment styles and just to be more healthy emotionally. Um, cause like I said, it's one thing to be clean on the outside, but, but this teaches you how to be clean on the inside and, and God knows we need that. Yeah, and it's so important. It's called, you know, uh, Maria, it's called Thrive Today. I'll type it in the chat so you can see it. Yeah, and, and like in, in our relationship with husband and, and wives, you know, just to really know that, that we're seen by the other person, that we're heard, you know, asking questions. Well, it, it seems like what you're saying is such and such, you know, that those kinds of things when, when, when we can say that or we can mirror something after. Words. Mm -hmm. Oh, so so that really hurt when, hurt you when I said that. Mm -hmm. um, or they might say, "No, you misunderstood me," and da da da. And so it's right, like it's a right. way to to clarify and to have clear communication. It's really good for married couples, for friends, yeah. for your kids. The bottom line is that that yeah. the relationship is more important than what the situation is. Amen. Something that we might Amen. be disagreeing with or whatever. We can have disagreements and still see and hear and and and, mm -hmm. and know that something is a big deal to some to someone. Um, but but to be there for them and 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 that whatever the situation that our relationship is more important than the, the item or the thing that we might be disagreeing with or so yeah. Always. Yeah, there's so much more we could talk about, but just wanted this to give that, that God would show us right during the Passover uh, about this important way to relate uh, the way he did with Moses uh, and just really gave us a picture uh, right during Passover. So, good. yeah, it's a beautiful time. By the way, the Parashat of Shavua this week is Sav. Um, I won't go into it because we don't have time, but I would encourage you to read it. I'll type in the... Uh, website of a wonderful um, ministry that uh, is geared towards Christians, um, Hebrew for Christians. I think it's .org or uh, .com. I think it's .org. I think so too. Um, but this is a great way to keep up with the Parashat Shavuot, the Torah portion of the week, because this is a, if you want to connect with the Jewish people, especially every Shabbat, um, this is probably one of the best ways to connect with us because it's something that, um, that we do every week. Um, I want to say a big thank you because I know that some of you from Germany have been supporting the outreach in the soup kitchen. Uh, I just want to give a couple of testimonies from that because it, it's, it's been an amazing amazing time. Um, and I want to just express gratitude uh, for those of you who have helped. We gave out packages in SWAT. And um, because we're one of the few people with a car, <laughs> so they kind of loaded us up. We had a lot of packages to deliver. Uh, Richard was driving, which was good. And then um, a friend of mine who's a, a religious woman, she and I were giving out the boxes at the homes. Two of the elderly widows who we came to burst into tears when we brought the packages to them. They were so, so grateful 
And, and I always make it very clear that this is coming from Christians in Germany, Australia, Canada, America, wherever. Um, I always make it very clear that this is because truly born again Christians want to bless the Jewish people and stand with us. And for many of these people, they have never heard that before. Um, we were in the homes of some people who are Chabadnikim, you know, the Chabad, very, very religious. In fact, one lady wouldn't even take our package. She had to open it to make sure it was, wasn't kosher enough for her. It was, <laughs> that's okay. It was kosher enough for everybody else. But, um, but some of the people were just so grateful. Some of the single mothers who we brought packages to, but one thing that I really loved, uh, this is a story, this is going in our next newsletter. Um, Richard, there, there was a place where we had to get, Spot is kind of strange. It, this, it's a city, it's a city on a hill, uh, just like Yeshua called it. Um, and it's um, the highest city in Israel, even higher than Jerusalem. And so everything, uh, you go up or downstairs in Spot. So Richard, there was nowhere to park. So he parked as close as he could. And Sophia and I took our boxes and, and walked and we had to walk a lot. And so we found three young men, uh, yeshiva students. They had just arrived in, in spot like 15 minutes ago and they were just looking like where to go. And um, so we said, can you guys help us? And I just wanna say the attitude of these young men. And you know what one of them said? Wow, we're only in Sfat, only 15 minutes, and already we get to do a mitzvah, a good deed. That was their attitude. So we handed over the boxes and the, the bottles of tibush, the, the uh, grape juice, and, and they walked with us, and we were able to talk with them. And, and um, I was able to share as much as I possibly can with them. I've been sharing Messiah with the leaders, though. And at one point, one of the leaders of the soup kitchen said, I've asked this question of a lot of Christians and nobody has ever given me a good answer for it. So he said, what does it say in Matthew one? And I said, well, it's the genealogy of Yeshua. And it goes through, you know, son of this, son of that. And, and he said, yeah, but why'd they include Joseph? If, he's, if Yeshua is supposedly the son of God, then they don't need Joseph in there. And he said, so can you answer that question? So I said a quick prayer because you know, it's one of those times where you don't know what you're gonna say. And so you're like, okay, Lord, give me the words. And he did. So I gave him the example of our family. So I was married before and my first husband abandoned me when I was pregnant with our second daughter. Uh, we had already had Deborah. I was pregnant with Shana, and he said, I don't want to do this. I'm, he went off with one of his girlfriends. So that was that. So I was alone with the two girls. Then I met Richard, and he said, when, when we started going out and, and courting, he fell in love not only with me, but with the two girls. And he said, these are fatherless children. They're orphans, according to scripture. And he said, I want to be not just their stepfather when we get married, but their father. And so he initiated the process after we got married to adopt them legally because the, the biological father was nowhere to be found. And, and so when you look at the, the girls, you see the character of the mother and the father, even though he wasn't their biological father, like Yeshua's biological father was from the Holy Spirit, from the father in heaven. But you look at the character of Joseph and you can see something in Yeshua too. And Zev was like, oh my gosh, I never heard an answer like that. He said, I'm gonna come with more questions. Is that okay? <laughs> and I said, of course, you know, and, and I just pray that the Holy Spirit will give me the answers. But, um, I just wanted to express gratitude to, to all of you for doing that, um, for standing with us and for standing with us here in Israel. One other thing I just wanna share that what God is doing here in Israel, um, for, for those of you, some of you get our updates, but some of you don't. Um, we like to brag about God, what he's doing, um, because certainly we don't have the power to reach all the Jewish people with the Messiah. Um, 
our sons and us, we work with our sons and the media team in Haifa, and we have just released a new video. Uh, Roberta is working with this project very much. Um, it's sharing the gospel through the pro-life message. And did you know that many, many women who have had abortions and men too, it's their baby too, um, they feel guilty afterwards and many of them suffer. Even some get suicidal and it's a big, big deal. And they try to hide it, but it, it comes back. And so this video uh, has come out in Hebrew only five days ago, and we're already up to over 20,000 hits. And Israelis are calling our hotline that we set up. And Roberta is on the Hebrew speaking hotline. Um, the English version of the video is coming out in the coming weeks. And then Richard and I volunteered to be on the hotline uh, to take calls from people who are looking, uh, who are searching, you know, why do I feel so badly whenever I see a mother with her child or something. And so you can look at my Facebook site for the Hebrew version if, if you don't have it. But I just, I just encourage you and, and ask you to please pray for this project because in Israel, um, for example, the soldiers in the army, girls are only required to serve two years. And it used to be they were entitled to two free abortions during those two years, but that wasn't enough. They had to raise it to three. And a lot of them, it, it's their form of birth control is abortion. And so it's a, it's a silent Holocaust here in Israel. And so I just wanted to give you that as a prayer point. Please pray for Roberta and for the team as they're answering calls on the hotline. Our, our son Ariel had an amazing testimony the other day. I mean, just, and, and we can't wait for our turn to come when the English one is released. And um, it, we're just so grateful for you there in the nations. You have no idea. Sometimes we're like, uh, Joshua, and we're, we're fighting and, and, it's, and the battle is fierce and, and you all are the ones who lift up our arms, especially during this season as we come out of the lockdowns and we see life in Israel, what it looks like now. It's, it's very different from, from before the lockdowns, but I don't have time to go into yeah. that. Um, Thank uh, you so much for the opportunity to be with you and to share uh, some about the Passover and the Shabbat. Yes. And we, we want to pray the benediction, the ironic benediction, but Fred, you wanted to share some Carolyn. Yeah, Carolyn and Richard, oh, we, I, well, I don't think we can leave this topic without praying for it, Fred. And yeah, we've got no, we, we need we need to pray for this project right now. And we need to pray for your um, your hand and your arm. Oh, as thank well. you. And, and oh, what, a, what an incredible hour of yeah. stories and songs and uh, testimony. Uh, Carolyn and Richard, just a ter terrific, uh, doesn't it feel you guys just like a family time uh, across the nations? It's just really amazing that we can even do this. And so we're really grateful to you. Um, what a ter tremendous uh, Shabbat. Susan, did you have something that you wanted to announce or, or say? No, no I, I wanted, we have Cindy Goff from the healing, Santa Maria healing rooms here. And I thought it would be good for her to pray over this situation, this uh, ministry and their launch of this uh, video. Cindy, could you uh, pray into this? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Lord, I just, we just all come together as one voice right now and we surround, Lord, this ministry globally. And Lord, we uh, acknowledge what you're doing here, Lord, in, a, in, a, in the deep place of shame and guilt. And Lord, um, with the abortion and with the suicide and Lord, right now we just release Jesus, what we just took in our own bodies, your flesh and your blood. And we all extend our hands, all extend our hands Lord, to this ministry. And Father, I just thank you for this couple. I thank you for, uh, Lord, the way they're honoring you in remembering the poor and preaching the gospel and extending the kingdom and now going into this um, wicked uh, thing that the enemy has done in our earth, stealing our children. And Lord, I just thank you right 
now and I release the healing that this is going to shift minds. It's going to heal the wounds in the minds, Lord, even what, what they were sharing about healing the wounds and validating and that lord your blood is coming because you're concerned so right now in the name of jesus we just lose the your power to break this principality over israel and over the minds of the people and it will lord consume i see it just landing like a like a bomb and then just the vibrations going out to the north and the south and the east and the west so we release your healing virtue and the glory of the Lord around you right now. And we all extend our hands and say, amen, 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 amen. in Yeshua's name. Amen, amen. amen. Well, in, um, in honor of Passover this year, because of the uh, COVID-19 situation, we have sensed that God is drawing our attention to Passover and what it means. And it ultimately means we cross over into the promised land. So we're going from Passover to crossover and we'll be starting a watchman boot camp. And so we really want to just hide under the shelter of the Almighty for this next week. We're gonna be doing sessions only at 6 a.m. most of the week. Wednesday, we will have a 3 p.m. session with House of Prayer and Exploits in Nazareth. You won't wanna miss that. And then, <clears throat> On Friday, we will have a Shabbat as, as well. But um, for the rest of the week, it'll be just 6 a.m. sessions. And we've had a lot of signups. And we're gonna try to do something different in getting breakout groups uh, assigned so that we get a sense of community developed over the week and then take a deep dive in what it really means to be a watchman today, N not only individually, but corporately and for the end time purposes. So the first night Sunday is gonna be both the biblical and the prophetic foundations of what we're doing. We'll be sharing a little bit of our story, but more importantly, we'll be, sh we'll be diving into the Bible and what does it say about us as watchmen? So I'm hoping that we'll go in one day and we'll cross over and come out a different way <laughs> by the end of the week. So it'll be Sunday, uh, on the Western Hemisphere, it'll be Sunday evening, 8 p.m. on Pacific time. It'll be 6 a.m. in Jerusalem time that we start on Monday. And it's online. You can go to our website, theglobalwatch.com. We are asking people who are interested in participating to sign up so that we can get these smaller communities developed over the week. Help us <laughs> and grant a lot of grace. But I, I believe the messages are gonna be strong and they'll be empowering for all of us and help us land on solid ground so we can launch off into this coming season well. Amen. Amen. Thank you, dear. Um, okay, so uh, Carolyn, go ahead and, and uh, uh, just uh, speak a blessing over us. As soon as Carolyn's done, then after she's done, everybody unmute yourselves and we're gonna, and we're gonna close and, and, and just bless each other. Go ahead, Carolyn. Okay. And I pray that you all have a blessed Shabbat and a blessed Passover. For yeah. those of you who are doing Seders tomorrow, I wish we could invite you to our Seder. We're having a family Seder in Haifa tomorrow. Um, but a little short notice, but may you have a, a blessing. Yeah. Chag, uh, Sameach. Chag Sameach. Pesach Sameach. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon each one of you and give you his peace. Shalom. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, we bless you from out of the Galilee. Shalom. All, all God's people said, Amen. Everyone on YouTube. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen.